Hello everyone, welcome to today's topic, subject verb concord. Here, concord means an agreement, agreement between the subject and the verb. Means the subject and the verb in a sentence must agree to each other. To say in plain words, if the subject is singular, it should take a singular verb. If it is plural, it should take a plural verb. So now let's see this in detail. Coming to the comparison of nouns and verbs in its forms, let's see plural nouns, they take S or ES at the end. Examples are here, tables, chairs, pans, potatoes. Contrary to this, in verbs, it is the singular which takes S or ES. As here, it's, plays, runs, studies. So as we see, or let's say as we compare nouns and verbs, it is plural if it is it ends with s or es in nouns, whereas it is, if it ends with s or es, it is singular in verbs. Now let's come to pronouns. The third person singulars, that is he, she, or it, these are the only three pronouns that take singular verbs. Let's have a look at the seven sentences. Out of the seven, you see number four, five, and six. It begins with, it has the subject, which are third person singular, she, he, and it. These are the only ones that take singular verbs. The rest, they take plural verbs, including I, even though it is a singular person. Now let's come to past tense, all comparing with singular. So there is no singular or plural in the past tense. You see here, in present tense, the singular is sings, eats, flies, and goes, which ends with s or es. And plural it is sing, eat, fly, go. But if the same verbs, if we go to its past form, we have only one form is. We do not have singular or plural past forms. Past form, is, it is the same for all of them. But of course, there are exceptions. Examples are here, B verbs. Of the B verbs, it is is or am, which is singular. And present is are in plural. Okay. But in the past form, Singular is was, and where is the past plural? So this is for verbs. Now let's come to the rules. Let's observe these two sentences. In the first sentence, you see the subject is the dog, which is singular. It says it takes a singular verb, box. In the second sentence, the subject is dogs, which is plural. It says it takes a plural verb. So from what this, uh, what we get from this is that singular subjects they take singular verbs. Plural subjects they take plural verbs. Okay, this is rule number one. Now let's come to the next rule. Let's observe this sentence. The boy who is running in the field is my cousin. If we look at this sentence, the subject is boy. And the verb is is. Boy is singular, verb is singular. And the words, or let's say the clause that comes in between, who is running in the field, it does not affect uh, it does not affect the agreement between the subject verb, uh, subject and the verb, between boy and is. So the sentence can be read as, the boy is my cousin. From this, we see that uh, this clause doesn't affect the agreement between the subject and the verb. So let's come to the next sentence here. The colors of the rainbow are beautiful. Here the subject is colors, which is plural, and the verb is are, which is also plural. So in between here, instead of a clause, we have a phrase, prepositional phrase of the rainbow. 
So here also we can say the colors are beautiful. Of the rainbow, this phrase, proposal phrase, can be neglected. So this phrase does not affect the agreement between the subject and the verb. That is rule number two of subject and verb agreement. Now let's come to these two sentences. There is a problem with the calculation. In this sentence, is is the verb. And where is the subject? Subject is the verb. So the verb comes after the verb. After the, the subject comes after the verb. In the second sentence, the verb is are and the subject is documents, which is plural. So in both the sentences, we see that the sentence that begins with their is or their are, the, sub, the, main, okay, the sentences which begin with their is or their are, the subjects come after the verb. This is rule number three. Now let's have a look at these two sentences. Does John usually sing in the bedroom? Where are the horses of Arabia? So let's look at this here. The verb is does sing. So does is in the singular form. And the subject is John. In the second sentence, are is the verb and the subject is horses. So again, similar to the earlier rule here, sentences which are questions, subjects do not always come before the verb. This is rule number four. So we have to be careful to find out the subject carefully so that we do not break the agreement between the subject and the verb in the sentence. Coming to next, let's have a look at this. The mobile and the charger are lying on the table. Here we have the subject, two subjects, mobile as well as charger. These two are combined, or let's say, joined with a conjunction AND. So, it is plural. So, whenever two, uh, the a subject has got, the subject is two subjects, or let's say two nouns or pronouns, whatever it is, which are joined by the conjunction AND, it takes a plural verb. This is rule number five. So, if two subjects are joined by the conjunction and, it takes plural verb. Coming to the next, let's have a look at these sentences. Here also we have the conjunction and, but it's different here. Red beans and rice is my mom's favorite dish. Here, red beans and rice are joined by the conjunction and. But red beans and rice are not two different objects, but they are together make one recipe, one dish. So it is a singular subject. So it takes a singular verb. In the same way, the chairman and the president, not sorry, the chairman and president has arrived. Here, chairman and president, you see, you see the difference here? The uh, chairman has got the before it, president has got not the before it. So, the chairman and president, the posts are occupied by the same person. So, it is, so the subject is singular and it takes a singular verb. Now, compare the, with the third one, the chairman and the president have arrived. See here? It is the chairman and the president are joined by the conjunction and. And it has got the before the president as well, just like in chairman. So they are two, the chairman and the president are two different persons. So the subject is plural and it takes a plural verb. So two subjects joined by and refer, if they refer to one item only, it takes a singular verb. This is rule number six. So from rule number six, we see that not all subjects joined by and is plural. Sometimes it might be singular or plural.
let's come to the next let's have a look at these two sentences no smoking or drinking is allowed what is not allowed no smoking or thing drinking here the sentence has got no or let's say if a sentence has got no or or then it is before the subject then it is uh, let's say it takes a singular verb similarly in the next one if the subject before the subject we have every then it takes a singular verb so sentences which begin with let's say the subjects which begin with is every or no they always take a singular verb this is rule number seven now coming to the next here again we see two subjects the first sentence two subjects Julie or Christy they are joined by or so when they are joined by or we should go with the, uh, the verb should go with the subject that is nearest to it which is Christie's and Christie is singular so it takes singular the same way here neither Julie no Christie here also neither nor is there and the verb is is because but that's just before that we have Christie which is singular so singular subjects are connected okay, which are connected by this or nor neither nor or either or as well as not only or but also if to the left or to the right of these conjunctions we have singular subjects then the verb is singular similarly instead of similar subjects okay this is rule number eight now very similar to this one again here you see the same conjunctions but the conjunctions are joining subjects which are plural boys and girls so it takes a plural verb so plural subjects okay the same thing only if uh, this neither or the, these conjunctions the given conjunctions or nor neither nor either or not only or but also this joins subjects which are plural both plurals okay then the verb is plural this is rule number nine again contrary to this if the same conjunctions they join subjects which are okay one is thieves which is plural and one is shop owner which is singular so this time the verb should go with the subject that is nearest to the verb here which is shop owner so it takes a shop owner is singular so it takes a singular verb in the same way in the second sentence out of the two subjects girl or boys we have the verb and the nearest to the verb is boys so which is plural so instead of has it has have which is plural so the same conjunctions if they connect subjects which are both singular and plural okay. that time we have to look at the verb that is nearest I mean we have to look at the subject which is nearest to the verb this is rule number 10 now coming to the next rule look at these two sentences all of the chicken is gone and all of the chickens are gone one is chicken one is chickens let's see the difference in the first one all of the chicken is gone you see the prepo uh, I mean the proportional phrase of the chicken if we remove this it says all is gone so here of the chicken what is this chicken this chicken is meat or food so all of the meat or food is gone here the sub we have to look for the agreement between subject and verb of the form of the subject that comes after the preposition which is chicken in the same way here chickens 
when we say chickens here, we are talking about the bird, not the meat. So depending upon the meaning, we have to use different forms of subjects and verbs. So subjects like some, half, none, more, all, is it okay? If they are followed by prepositional phrase, then the object of the preposition, okay, it will determine the form of the verb. This is rule number 11. Okay, now, four liters of oil is required to get the car running. Here, liters of oil is a unit of measurement. Okay. Even though it looks like okay, liters of oil, liters is plural, we, we don't say four is required. Okay, four liters of oil, which is a unit of measurement, so it takes singular. In the same way, two hours. It also takes singular. So, this singular verb forms is usually used for units of measurement of time. Even though the, uh, the measurement might be more than one. Here, two and four. So, this is rule number 12. Coming to number 13, let's see. Everybody wants a higher paycheck. Here, everybody. See, this is an indefinite pronoun. And in, the, in this indefinite pronouns, they take singular verbs. This is rule number 13. But again, exceptions are there upon the indefinite pronouns like few, many, several, both, all, and some. These things, they always take plural verbs. Examples are given here, few animals. Here it is plural. It takes plural verbs. Let's come to the next rule. Okay, here, look at these two sentences. In the first sentence, and the second, the subject is heard and crowd. Okay, both are collective nouns. Even though they have no spelling of uh, S in, to show that it is plural, they are collective nouns. And these collective nouns, okay, they, they stand is a single group, so they take singular verbs. So collective nouns, okay, examples are given here, they take singular forms of verbs. This is rule number 14. Now let's observe these four sentences. Look at sentence number one. The class has 30 students. See, the verb is singular the class has. Why? Let's see. Here, it is a the class is a collective noun. So it takes a singular verb. Now let's again, the class are handing in their papers. Here, the, the noun, okay, the noun takes plural verb. Why? Because the class is, here it represents individual students who are handing in the papers to the teacher or the invigilator, the individual students, not the class together as a group. So this it takes a plural verb. In the same way, sentence number three, the band here is performing until midnight. Here, the band is a collective noun which is performing together as a group. But if we look at sentence number four, the band were arguing among themselves. Here the band takes plural verb where. Why? Who is arguing? Here it is not the band as a collective noun arguing together. It is the individual members of the band arguing among themselves. So it takes plural verb. So exceptions are always there even for collective nouns. Again, look at these collective nouns in these three sentences. People like to be praised. That's it. Number two, the cattle are in the field. And number three, the police have caught the thief. Here, the subject, people. Okay. Cattle. Police. Okay. They are plural. Even though they have no plural marker, 
at the end of the word so they take plural even this is a little different from the earlier one okay. this groups of collective nouns which are people cattle and police they always take plural verbs they are always treated as plural now coming to this last two sentences the expendables is a movie starring many famous actors and the great okay, the second one great expectations is a wonderful work by charles dickens if we look here see the expendables what is this expendables or the, the let's say these subjects another one great expectations the first one is a movie name of a movie the second one is name of a book so they take singular verbs so we see that names of titles of books movies novels etc even though they may contain plural markers or not they always take singular verbs this is the last rule for subject number agreement so let's hope that you understood this topic for today thank you